let's let's get a crack let's kick it back like a ball so earlier today this morning I should say my son had an appointment to go to the the wheelchair brace wheelchair back and brace clinic this is where they um, create repair um, braces and wheelchair prosthetics for people who have some form of um, physical disability and um, so my youngest son that is so he has um, I would call it a mild, a mild case of scoliosis. And uh, yeah, so over the past couple of years, I'd say maybe five years. Um, oh, yeah, I think maybe five years ago. I could be wrong. Around there is when we first learned that you know we needed to stop paying attention to the curvature of his spine. And um, it just over time, slowly, it continued to progress. And curve, so he has a he has a mild case of scoliosis. Um, he has been experiencing discomforts here and there. I'd say this year has been the most uncomfortable year for him. And this is the same son who I did a video about last year. Who I believe it was last year. No. My first time I did a video on him was the year before last, I believe. So that's 2022, um, where he was assaulted twice. He got jumped twice in the same week. And so all of that spiraled into him just having anxiety, um, fear, trauma. He just, he just didn't heal. He didn't heal from that, and it, it didn't make it better that we never found who assaulted him. I already explained all that in that video, and this is the same son who I shared, I believe I shared this one last year, where I found out that he was dealing with, battling with suicidal ideation. And not only him, but his brother, his older brother. So, as of right now, um, so I haven't given an update on how things are going with him, but um, it's, it's, it's been an emotional year for him, for us, as a family. And it's, it's been an uncomfortable year, um, pain-wise, because then he starts having, you know, the scoliosis issue, causing discomfort when he's sitting for long periods of time. Um, he's, he's, he's having battles with depression. And, you know, then he's had some issues with his um, teeth. Um, so we, we working on that, we taking care of that, so that's being resolved. Yeah, his, 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 his body's just going, going through it, been going through it now. And, um, so today I took him to the clinic where he got his brace from so that, um, an adjustment can be made on one of the straps. And his um his um the the young lady who is um, a licensed prosthetist, I believe they're called. She had some questions, you know, <laughs> just just doing her assessments before she makes the repairs and adjustments on his brace and so some of the questions I couldn't answer so I'm like I, I don't know I didn't take him to that last appointment where he had to meet with his doctor 
who specializes in the spine. So I had to text his mom and get some further background information because he was telling, um, <laughs> when we were there this morning, he was, he was telling his practitioner that the, the, the doctor told him, stop wearing it. Just don't wear it anymore. So I had to get some further information because she was like, why would he just say that? And so when I contacted his mom, she was telling me that, well, that's because he was not compliant. You see, the depression had affected my son in, in making poor judgment concerning his, his health, concerning the results that we want to see from, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, hold on. Just fixing this. From affecting the positive results that we want to see that the brace would hopefully do, which is to slow down, not stop, but slow down the curvature of his spine. Because without wearing the brace, that spine is going to continue to curve rather quickly. But the brace. Um, I'm sure many people, you know, wear a brace, a back brace for their, their spine. Many people could probably relate. I'm sure, because this is life. This is reality. Everybody got problems. and Everybody on my block's got them. So, you know, we're not exempt. This family is not exempt. My kids are not exempt. So um, I'm sure there's other people who can understand what I'm saying about how, you know, the brace works and, and the results that we're looking for. So I got the answer as to why he wasn't wearing it anymore. It was it was it was the depression and him just just tired of, of what his body is going through, what he is suffering from, and it's just one thing after the other. And this year has been that year for him. It's just one thing after the other. And then on top of that still dealing with the emotional aspects of things where he does not he doesn't like it here since we moved from Philly he doesn't like it here in Florida he hates it here and and yes it last year was terribly hot disgustingly hot last year in 2023 we moved in the summer nobody warned us nobody told us that it was going to be the hottest year Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so, the weather is one thing he doesn't like. And then we're, we're in a community where, yeah, we're, we're in the boondocks. You know, we're, we're, we have removed ourselves from the busy life, the fast-paced life, the hustle and bustle. Um, we, we, we are not in a community that things are near to us. You, you, you got to drive a, a good distance to the movie theaters, to GameStop, to the mall. Um, yeah, there's parks out here, but not the kind of parks that they were used to back in Philly. So, I understand. But I did it. Well, we moved, you know, hoping for a, a change of scenery, yes, um, change of school for them, you know, hoping that it, it would be a better fit for them. And, um, you know, and right now he's the only one in high school. His older brother graduated already. Um, what would it know? His older brother graduated in May of this year, and now he's working, so he's left, you know, he's, he's left by himself. He doesn't have his older brother there in, in, in school with him. And uh, it's, it's been rough. But anyway, what brings us here today? Why did I bring this all up? As, as I was, you know, talking to his practitioner, who was looking about his back brace, 
um, and I was getting further information because she's confused. She's trying to understand why would he tell you to stop wearing it? That's the, the primary doctor. Why would he tell you to stop wearing it? But you're here today saying you need some you know, adjustments made on it. Nobody kept me in a loop, so I don't know what's going on here. So if he's telling you not to wear it, then why bother? Why, why are we here? Then I don't need to do this. So after I got some information from his mom, I was talking to her privately outside of the room. And I was filling her in. And it, it, just, it hit me. It hit me. It hit me. Because then I remembered, you know what? This son of mine was born. He came into this world. He came into our life um, with a deficiency and I went over this already many years ago I did a video on this but I'm gonna just chop it up real quick real short real sweet and I'm sitting in my garage so there's um, some technicians over there across the street they're adding some mirrors I believe and, and I think windows windows and mirrors into a home that is getting ready to go up for rent, whatever. So, sorry about that. And so he he was born with this. He was born with VLCAD, V-L-C-A-D, and it stands for Very Long Chain Acyl, Acyl, Co, Coa, D High. Drogenase, dehydrogenase. Okay, so very long chain, acyl CoA dehydrogenase, VLCAD. That's the that's the abbreviation. And it is a deficiency that is rare. And it, it's inherited disorder that prevents the body from breaking down certain fats into energy. This can lead to a number of health problems, including metabolic crisis which is periods of illness that can occur in infants and children with this deficiency symptoms include irritability poor appetite and too much sleepiness if left untreated metabolic crisis can lead to breathing problems seizures coma and even death this is what we were told when he was born also low blood sugar also known as hyperglycemia this can occur in people with this deficiency also in large liver known as heptomegalia, heptomegaly. Um, and so this is another part of the deficiency, muscle weakness, muscle pain, and breakdown of muscle tissue that can occur in adults with this, which is called rhabdomyolysis. Yeah, rhabdomyolysis, I believe I pronounced it correct. So it's caused by a missing or non-functioning function enzyme called very long chain ACLCOA dehydrogenase. It's inherited into autosomal recessive pattern, which means both copies of the gene in each cell must have a variant to cause the disorder. So what we were told when he was an infant was that I have part of that um, recessive pa pattern. I have part of the gene and his mother have the other part. We just happen to, you know, find each other in a world of billions of people and that gene connected, right? So connected and because now we, we, we have him. So we already have a first child. So now this second child, it just happened to, yep, connect into his gene, his DNA. And so, boom, it activated in him. Didn't activate in the other son, but activated in him. And so he was born like this. All right. So I, when I was talking to his practitioner, I, I was sharing this with her and she was like, wow. And I was like, yeah, go look it up. That's your homework. And I said, so, you know, he was born with that. Then he was also born with the um, bow legged. He was severely bow legged to the point where we were encouraged, um, again, by practitioners, they can straighten out his legs. But they would have to break the bone and then um, put him in braces 
and those leg braces will help straighten out the bones and will help him to walk properly. So I didn't I didn't agree to it. So with with the VL CAD deficiency and with his severe bow legged um, issue there, I just took all those things to God. And this is what I'm telling his practitioner as we're at the clinic, the wheelchair brace and prosthetic clinic. And I'm telling her this. Um, and um, as I'm sharing this with her, you know, I'm like, hey, listen, I just trusted the Lord. I just trust in God. And whether he would, you know, touch Andrew or not, that's my son's name, whether he would touch Andrew or not, I was just going to trust him to the end, you know? And that's what I did when he was a baby. And one day we took him back because we had to take him every two weeks, I believe, to a, to a special hospital way out in New York. And he had had to have blood work done. And one day, you know, we went back and um, to do more blood work. And, as, you know, usual to hear the same old, well, this is where his numbers are. This is where this is at. And this is what we're looking at. And this is what we're still monitoring. Are you guys still following the treatment plans and, and meals? His diet, he had a special diet. But he could, his body was not digesting that special formula diet that they were giving us. It wasn't digesting it. It was actually causing him more harm. So it was my mother and my mother-in-law who says, "Yo, forget that. We're gonna give the we're gonna give him what's porridge, cornmeal porridge, porridge, and then just start blend up the porridge, and we're just pouring it buckle, and we just eat him a little baby, and then drink it up, and then we realize, wait a minute, this is working. He's accepting this, and he's keeping the weight on. He's putting on weight." Okay, all right, so we're just going to work with it. So even though we had a plan from his physicians, because he had a dietary um, doctor as well, but it wasn't working. So that's what worked. And we just kept doing that, kept doing that. And as far as his, his bow legged go, I just kept praying. I would just rub him down. I would just get the oil. Um, you know, hear me out. I was just following scripture. I anointed him. I rubbed his leg down in oil. And I would just pray. And I would just pray. And I would just pray. And I would say things like, you're going to walk. You're going to jump. You're going to stand. You're, you're going to ride a bicycle. You're going to run up and down. You're going to do all of that. You're going to jump all over the place. And I, because that, that's what I wanted for him. I wanted him to, to, to experience what his older brother was doing. Running around, walking, going up and down the steps you know, and uh, just walking properly. And so as I'm sharing all this with his practitioner, I mean, her eyes were welling up with water and turned red. And she says to me, keep telling him that what you're doing is the right thing. Keep Oh, why, why would she say that? Because I said to her, I would, I shared all this with him because he's now 15. So I share all of this experience that I've had, that I've witnessed God do. He's been healed from the deficiency. Because when we went back to that, um, that visit and we looked at the blood, she was showing us the blood work, um, his, his um, practitioners, his doctors, they were saying they don't even see it anymore. They don't see the trace of it in his blood anymore. Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get a praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can I get a glory? You know, can, can we get a glory? Hallelujah. Jesus did it. Jesus did it. You know, like, like, like the singer says, you know, I put all that on red. You know what I'm saying? I bet all that on red. And I just went all out. I trust Jesus. I banked on him. Because even when it, even even if it doesn't work out, it still worked out. Because God knows best. I might not like it right now, in the moment now. But he knows that it was best and right for me and right for my life in that time, in that season. 
and it might be a season that's it's a, it, it might be a forever season it, it might not ever change it might not ever get better it might not ever heal but i'm going to still trust jesus and be like hey lord you know what because at the end of the day yeah not everybody gets healed not everybody straightens out their bones straighten out or you know the sickness and disease leaves them not everybody right but Here's what, here's what he did promise. And I've said this before plenty of times. Let's see. He said... Philippians chapter 3. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. So while I'm flipping today, let me finish tell you what his practitioner says. She says, keep telling him, keep reminding him. And eyes are red, tears is welling up. And she said to me, because my mother did the same thing. She kept telling me, she kept reminding me what Jesus did, what he is doing, because I was born with a lot of health problems and I suffer from a lot of health problems but she keeps reminding me that Jesus got me and um, you know she excused herself and uh, she said she'll be in the room yeah she excused herself because she, she needed to gather she, she was just me sharing that with her touched her so much touched her so much I, I didn't know it, it, I wasn't having a oh let me share a testimony with you moment it wasn't like that I was just giving her more information to help her with her assessment because my son wasn't telling the whole truth he wasn't telling the whole reason but and I knew there was more to it that's why I asked his mom I text her like yo why go on and so we're gonna read Philippians chapter 3 verse 21 um, let me start at verse 17. This is our citizenship in heaven. This is Apostle Paul writing to the, to, the, to the saints there. And he says, Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And here it is, here it is. Verse 21, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to subdue all things to himself. What's happening there? Um, so from verse 17, 21, here's a summary. In addition to the Judaizers, other carnal believers stood to affect the Philippians by advocating a perversion of Christian liberty and taking freedom from the law as license to sin. But in verse 20, Paul again reminds his readers that although they may be citizens of Rome, they have a higher citizenship and really are only aliens on this earth. Okay, let's go over to Luke. Because I just believe this. I hold on to this. I, tell, I even tell some of my patients this when I'm at work. You know, who are just going through it emotionally. So here we go. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 28. Now, it, this is Jesus transfigured on the mountains. Now it came to pass. Is that the one I want to read? Hold on. Let me, let me look. Let me scan it real quick. Scan it real quick. 
No, that's not the one I want to read. Give me a moment. Hold on. Oh my Lord, I found it. This is what, and here's the title of this section right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Um, verse is 50 to 58. I'll just finish it up. So it's titled, Our Final Victory. I am going to put three songs from three different uh, musicians in the comment section. The first song I'm going to put there is a song that I love, I love, I love so deeply from a brother named Trip Lee. And it's called Sweet Victory. And right here, this is titled Our Final Victory. And real quick, so on the way, when we had left the clinic, I was playing that, I was talking to my son, and I was remind, I was doing exactly what his practitioner said. And I was reminding him of how far he's come along and how much God has walked with him touched him and kept him you know and and yes he's going through all the anguish right now and the, the mental frustrations and the depressions and the whatever else that he's not sharing that's going on in his mind but Jesus knows and so I was just having these conversations with him as I'm trying to talk over this helicopter because I'm not pausing this video because I don't know how long they're going to be up in the air and I got places to go. So, here it is. I was playing that song, Sweet Victory, from Triple E. Please, please, give it a listen. It brings tears in my eyes every time I listen to it and I shared it with him. And so, he actually, he actually enjoyed it and there's a particular um, line in the song where when I had dropped him off at school, he had texted me and he says, he was quoting that part in the song and he, and he says, I hope that part is true. It is true, son. Paul says, now, now this I say, brethren, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Mm -hmm. But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Triple E also has a triple is actually um, the truth featuring Triple E and they got a song called Trumpet Blow. I'm gonna put that also in the um, comment section. Check that one out. Awesome, awesome song. Goes on to say, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Yes, this flesh is corruptible. It's decaying, it's dying. You know that. The flesh is just, it's dying. We get gray hair. You know? We'll start to get um, some aches and pains and some nicks and some cracks here or there. And shoot, sometimes, for many other people, they were born with issues. And then you have other group of people, as they get older in life, then they start to pick up and develop these issues. This is... The, this flesh, this human body, it's corruptible. It's not going to last forever. But we got a hope. Here it is. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised, incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God made known to Paul that the dead will be raised up by the instant instantaneous transformation at the last trumpet. Trumpets were used to call God's people together 
and had added royal coronations in presenting kings to Israel. Moreover, this transformation will happen to the living as well as the dead. Okay, Jesus promised that he's going to renew the earth. We're going to have a new earth and a new body. Revelation 21 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. New earth and a new body. And so, you might be hurting now, it's painful now, this sickness sometimes, or this illness sometimes, chronic issues you're going through. Um, diseases, you know, you're going, it's not even your fault, right? Like you were just born into the, yes, we were all born into sin. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And a part of being born into sin, one of the things that we, we get with being born into sin is sickness, disease, and corruption to our flesh and, blood, and our flesh and body. And yes, even our blood, yes, it's infected. Sin has infected the entire human body. Yes, I'm wearing glasses. You think Jesus was wearing glasses when he was here? Some people have hearing aids. You think Jesus was wearing a hearing aid? Yes. Oh, are you going to say, well, he, he was young. He was in his 30s. There's people who are, who are younger than Jesus before Jesus went back to heaven. Younger than Jesus who, are, who has hearing aids. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to share this with you because I feel like I feel like it, 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 it'll bless somebody who can relate and, un, and understand. You know, these things aren't often talked about, especially what my son had, VL, VLCAD. I haven't heard anybody talk about that. I and when he was a baby, and we was going to that hospital, that specialized hospital, who specialized in, you know, those rare type of disease, there was a, a girl child who was born also with the same issue. And, you know, I said it in my video when I first talked about this. I wish we had kept in contact with that family and, you know, we could have just, you know, grow to grow, grow together as, as, as families and keep in contact with one another, check each other's progress, you know, what's working for you, what's not working for you. Um, I, I really wish we would have kept in contact with them to know how their daughter's doing and for them to know how our son is doing. Um, but yeah, yeah. And, and as I told my son, and I'll tell you, you've made it this far, God has kept you. You've overcome. And you're gonna continue to overcome in him because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And you know, when your flesh is weak, you know, yes, we understand when our flesh is weak spiritually, you know, he is strong, but when your flesh is weak, he's he, he's there to lift you up and carry you the rest of the way. You know, there are people who are going through some weird, weird sickness and disease that I've I've never heard of. I've seen some um some people post some of their, you know, everyday um, you know, get ready with me, how they go through their daily life with their illnesses and disease. You know, I was watching a video of this young woman who, and it's a wonderful thing that she's doing. It's a wonderful thing that many of you do when you post these videos because it shows that 
there are many, many people who are going through the similar or the same things and they feel like they're alone and there are times when my son feel like he's alone and I have to remind him, like, you're not alone son, you're not there by yourself, there are other people that I go through the same thing. And so I watched this young lady where she was once vibrant, was able to move up and down in the world, take care of herself, get dressed, feed herself. But I don't remember the name of this disease that she has that has crippled her body down to the point where she can own, she's in a wheelchair, a motorized electric wheelchair where she just uses her finger, just a finger to move the chair. I seen her on, on Instagram and um, you know, she used to play violin. She was very uh, active. Was it violin or was it a, was it a piano? It was one of them. I'm, I'm sure you've if this video really gets to the right persons to see this, you'll know who I'm talking about. I don't remember her name. I didn't get her name. I wish I had, um, you know, got her name. And so her dad, her dad is in her life. She doesn't have her mom, or her mom. And, um, you know, she was a musician, really, really great musician because she showed videos of her performance before this crippling disease started to uh, um, attack her muscles. Yeah, attack her muscles. So her dad is the one taking care of her. And she's been through m many different wheelchairs as time went on. Um, each one has gotten better, but it's been a journey for her. And there's many people like her. So when she shared her video, many persons who are in the same um, situations, they've shared their videos as well. Or they've commented and said, hey, I'm going through the same thing. or yeah, this is what I've done, or here's what I've attached to my wheelchair to make things a little bit more accommodating for me, and, and things like that. And so, yeah, man, we, we all got a story, and um, share your story, you know what I'm saying? You don't know who's going to help. You don't know who's going to um, be blessed by it. Yeah. That's just it. I don't have anything more for you. I am going to get ready to get out the door and go pick up my daughter from school. Um, yeah, that's it, man. Just continue to live on purpose, godly purpose. I'm out. Whoosh.